Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. Happy Labor Day. It is Labor Day week. It marks the unofficial end of summer, um, but also it turns the corner from the summer into, as we're sellers, Q4, right? We're not talking about Q4 today, just so you know. We are talking to a special guest who is going to give us some insight into selling on Walmart. Yes, we've had a couple Walmart guests here before, but it's really important to think about this. Did you know that the average millionaire has six to seven or more streams of revenue? Different streams. So if you're an Amazon seller and you'd like an additional revenue stream, we're gonna talk about Walmart today. You think you could consider adding Walmart as a platform. It is a third party marketplace, just like Amazon. and Use a lot, utilizing the same strategies that we use in Amazon can be brought over to the Walmart platform. So today's guest is Michael Lieber, and he is going to go into depth on how Walmart might be able to be a game changer for you. But before we talk to Michael, I wanted to remind you, if you missed last week's episode, then you missed the special announcement for students only. So sorry if you're not a student. If you are a wholesale bundle student, and you want to launch a bundle in 40 days, we have a special bundle challenge coming up on September 18th. Uh, I'm hosting the first ever live 40 day bundle challenge. So who is this for? It is for wholesale bundle students who want to build a bundle in 40 days. Y'all, do you know what that means? That means that your bundle can be launched and on Amazon before Halloween. Now, I wouldn't launch a Halloween bundle in the middle of October, um, but before Christmas, before Thanksgiving, before Q4 before the end of the sales season. So if you want to do that, it is a approximately five weeks, about 40 days, one hour weekly live accountability calls with mini trainings. Uh, we have an entire workbook you're gonna work through. You have, you're gonna have homework and checklists. And why are we doing this? It's to kickstart your bundle. There's a lot of you that have been on the fence about creating a bundle. Um, you've created a bundle, maybe it didn't do so well. Maybe you just need a little bit of jump start before the holidays. The goal is to launch a bundle in 40 days with some accountability and handholding. So we are going to do live classes once a week um, and we are going to launch a bundle. We're gonna have a curriculum, weekly tasks, checklists, homework, accountability. And by the end of the challenge, if you do all the work, you'll be launching your bundle. So if you're interested and you are a wholesale, this is for wholesale bundle students only. Why? Because we're not reteaching the entire course. You have the course. So you need to, this is about utilizing and implementing the course with hand-holding, accountability, uh, weekly calls, weekly homework, so that you can just get it done. And y'all, I've made it really affordable because I really just want you to get the thing done. Launch the bundle, give it a shot, give it a try. You cannot learn from something that you don't actually implement. So here I'm to help you implement. Um, it's for wholesale bundle students only. If you're not a student, go to mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe, get our free training and see if it's right for you. Because then you can get the class and then you can join the bundle. You have a couple of weeks before we, we actually start the challenge. Um, so mommyincome.com forward slash challenge. Come join the bundle challenge. I'd love to see you. I love to see people live. Um, we will be interacting. Um, and so you're gonna have to show up for class. And so I can't wait to see you. So now, Let's get to today's guest because we are going to talk all about how we can add Walmart as part of this um, continuous journey into reselling, into selling online, into being an online business owner. So we are going to get to today's guest and Michael started selling on Amazon in high school and he has built a few multi-million dollar brands hello this is crazy had a lot of success on walmart scaled two of his businesses and his brands on walmart to category leaders this guy is the expert and i cannot wait to talk to him i cannot wait to introduce you here to michael michael welcome to the show i'm so glad that you're able to join us today so let's just jump right in and get to know you a little bit better so tell us you've started selling on amazon in high school tell us a little bit about that awesome thanks for having me so um yeah in high school you know i went to high school that actually had really long days but for some reason i was just like i felt like i still wanted to do more i always wanted to make money so i just started doing a bunch of random jobs and just random businesses um, and, you know, somebody in my community 
um, they were like, they were selling a lot online. And I'm like, I don't, I didn't even know really what that meant. And I was like, I just need, I, they were doing really, really well. So I'm like, they were younger and I'm like, if they doing it, like I should, I should just figure out what it is. So I just, I asked them a bunch of questions. Um, I tried to learn from them. They, you know, they, they, they taught me the ropes and I just kind of got started with it. And, you know, we started just like after we, I was working a lot with my brother at the time. And it's like, after we would come home from school, like right away, we just sit down, do some product research. Um, you know, when we wake up in the morning, we would just start um, shipping and packing orders and we just kind of scaled it from there. But yeah, we started in early high school. Did you, did you start with like retail arbitrage or like books or flipping like that? Or how did you get started? Yeah. So when I started for the, um, I, I started with private label right away, but I, I started the process of private label right away. But when, once I, st- it was taking a while to, for us to find the product, once we order the product. So during that time, we were actually doing some retail arbitrage. Like we find different, we found different deals of like products that would go, you know, a lot on sale on Amazon. And then we would actually sell or in other marketplaces and then we would sell them on eBay. Um, and we actually um, were able to do pretty well there. And that helped like fund a lot of like the private label investments and like getting the private label brand started. You know, I was always um, like very into like doing the products the right way and the right content and everything. So um, it was great to have, to do like both of those, like the rebuild arbitrage with the, with the private label. It's kind of like the, the, fast nickel and slow dime, so to speak. So the private label takes a little bit longer to build, to research, to import, to create, or, you know, however you're doing that. And so supplementing with some arbitrage really helps kind of feel that. Now, for reference, can you kind of give us some some dates, like back in the day? Like how long ago was this when you were in high school selling on Amazon? So I, I'm so bad at this math, but I, I it was at the end of 10th grade. Um, So during 10th grade and starting to 11th grade, so um was 16 i think at the time and now i'm turning 25 next week so um i guess so it's like, like a so, good 10 years or so nine or yeah, 10 years it's ago it's been a while yeah it's funny because i people always ask me how long i've been selling online and i feel like i one time did the math and it's like so it's like seven years when i did the math and now it's like i always say seven years but i'm like it's been more than seven years now <laughs> so um i yeah, think after so you pass a certain point we're like who cares that was a long time ago <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> a long time yep. right yep so tell us about these brands. So you said you, you kind of did some arbitrage, you're young, you're hustling in school, you know, and maybe did you go to college or did you kind of just go right into some of this, this online selling because it was working for you? Yeah. So I went right into the online selling because by the time I finished high school, um, the brand was already established and we already were launching our second brand. Um, we actually had our own warehouse, like right next to the, right next to our high school. So like we would be able to leave by breaks and check in on it and stuff. So um, yeah, we finished high school, but throughout high school, um, after high school, we went right in time fully into it. I was traveling for a little bit right after high school for like a year, but then right after that, it went like fully into it. Um, but yeah, so during that time, we mainly built up a fitness brand. Um, so like more focus on bodybuilding accessories, um, weightlifting accessories. And then um, we transitioned into launching a, um, a, a more general fitness brand. So more like home fitness um, that was, you know, more competitive, but appealed to like a larger audience, um, as well as like a home, home and kitchen brand. So, um, you know, things like laundry baskets, um, dish drying mats and things, um, items like that. Awesome. So when, when you're, you're scaling, you, you've got these brands on Amazon, um, when did Walmart enter the picture for you? Yeah. So great question. So, uh, you know, I think it was, it was at the end of high school, um, and, um, we were having some, we would have had some really good growth with Amazon, but we were also having a lot of issues. Um, you know, a, a lot of the competitors in our space were more established than us and were a little, you know, we were in some very competitive category. So they had some great tactics or black tactics mm-hmm. and, um, it started getting really hard because, you know, we would get our listing taken down. We would get a bunch of negative reviews on our listing. Um, and, um, at one point we got suspended for a little bit. And I, I just realized I'm like, we Amazon allowed us this amazing opportunity to build an amazing brand. You know, the, you, traditionally, like the amount of time, resources, effort, money it costs to build up a product line, to invest in that, to build up the content behind it, the marketing behind it is so expensive. And with Amazon, it's like, it's a process that like, as you're selling, you're able to kind of evolve the brand. And I realized like we had a strong brand and strong products, like let's expand it to other marketplaces. So we started expanding it to other marketplaces. We were selling 
Uh, we got into QVC. We're selling it on Groupon. We're selling it on Target. There was like a lot of online marketplaces, as well as online retailers, they call them, um, that we were selling them on. One of those was Walmart. Um, and this is probably yeah, five years ago, approximately. Um, now we started really selling on Walmart. And, you know, as we were selling on Walmart, we, you know, as well as all the other marketplaces, we noticed that Walmart was like growing significantly without any real work done behind it. So it got me thinking, like, if we really put the focus and effort behind figuring out Walmart, like we did Amazon, um, you know, there could be something really there. So, you know, we really dove into it, started figuring it out and started really learning a lot more about Walmart. Um, and from there, we were able to really build, a, you know, the top selling um, brand in our category on the platform. Um, we got the opportunity to meet with the buyers to potentially get into retail stores. So um, it expanded the, you know, the opportunity a lot. And, you know, so we got fully ingrained with Walmart and um, yeah. I think that's so interesting because so many people do too many things at once and they have their hands in 14 different categories and 14 different marketplaces and they can't kind of fit a jack of all trades kind of thing. So I love that you said we just put all of our efforts and our focus into this new platform instead of exploring all the options. You know, you tried Target, you tried this and that, but Walmart was the one that was like, hey, this is giving us the most growth in the moment. Let's figure this thing out. I love that. And there's so much truth to that because so many people think they have to do everything all the time and all at once otherwise we might be forgotten when really if you just put all of your efforts into one lane first then you can start expanding so i love how you did that with amazon first and yes of course we know amazon can have some problems and issues um especially when you're you know building a brand and you've got competitors leaving false reviews and all kinds of things and i know they're working hard to um get the bad players out but it's also a process so can you define a couple of significant differences that you found with amazon versus walmart most of my audience is looking to get into walmart and they're very much amazon sellers so talk about a little bit of the transition what's different what's uh challenging what's what's the significant differences yeah, so I think it's a couple of the significant differences are number one, um, you know, I always start by saying like it's important to understand that like Walmart's the only real competition to Amazon. Like they're mm -hmm. big enough to compete, um, you know, from a logistics standpoint, from a financial standpoint, but they're also interested in competing. Like they're investing the money to compete with it. So they are, you know, doing a lot of things to enhance the selling experience um, for marketplace sellers. Um, but, you know, there's some core differences. So number one, the way your listings are structured, right? Walmart wants different types of listings than Amazon wants. They want shorter titles. They want unique content. They don't want the content that you have on Amazon. They want you to edit that and make it unique to Walmart because it helps them rank more within Google. Um, so, you know, I think it's important to understand like a lot of Walmart traffic is coming from Google, right? People searching certain products and Walmart sites rank really high. So, um, you know, when somebody searches for shoes, like a lot of times a Walmart link is going to show up sometimes even above the Amazon link on Google. So there's a lot of traffic coming from there. So a lot of what they do is focused on getting that traffic. Um, another thing's really important to note about Walmart is it's an omni-channel retailer, right? So there's, you know, the marketplace, um, which is the marketplace sellers, um, which is probably what most the audience is. Um, and then you have you know, 1P, which is um, they sell directly to Walmart. So just like you have Vendor Central on Amazon, you have 1P on Walmart. But in addition to that, you have 1P where Walmart buys the item from, from brands and then sells it on walmart.com. But then you also have in-store items, right, that are in-store. So there's opportunity with that. And there's also more challenges with that. So the opportunity with that is if you do well within Walmart Marketplace, um, it's the best way to get your products into Walmart stores. Um, Walmart clearly said it. Um, and that's how I got my own brand into Walmart stores nationwide and like one of the hardest category supplements for my one of my other brands. Um, and it was through doing um, so selling on marketplace, um, showing that we um, work on marketplace and then getting that, you know, getting that into stores. So there's like that's the advantage of that. Um, kind of that 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 that's part of the ecosystem. The disadvantages for market for sellers is that you know, you're going to have to compete with these brands that are, their products are in stores. So they're going to show high up and they're going to have low cost, low prices because they're doing much more volume and there isn't going to be shipping costs. So because they could choose pickup and delivery. So, um, you know, there's that challenge there and it's important to kind of understand the ecosystem. Um, it's uh, other important things is like the products that you'll do really well with on Walmart might be the products that you struggle with on Amazon. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have like a beauty brand and um, so we have, we 
you know, once I got really into Walmart, we launched our agency where we help brands and one we've came across so many interesting brands um, that like are really successful on Amazon. One brand, for example, um, sells beauty products on Amazon and they have like these multi-use oils that do really, really well. Right. But then they have like vitamin C serums that don't do well at all because vitamin C serums is so competitive. And on Amazon, it's hard to do well with that. But with their multi-use oils, they're more unique and they do really, really well with that. On Walmart, there isn't enough of a market for multi-use oils, but for vitamin C serums, by just doing a few proper things, you could rank in the top positions, right? Because it's not that competitive. So the very generic products, the more, um, you know, open, the, the bigger category products, like those ones will, could do really well on Walmart. So it's important to kind of understand that when like you're looking at your catalog and seeing if it's the right fit for Walmart, like if you have products that, you know, people, you know, um, there's a high volume of people that shop for it. There's a strong enough market on Walmart where you can make significant sales and you grow with the platform, right? Walmart's growing at the, a much faster rate than Amazon percentage wise. So like you grow with the platform. Uh, it's so interesting because about five years ago or so when Walmart really introduced the third party selling, I mean, it's probably longer than that at this point. We Time just gets away from us, right? Yeah. It goes so fast. Um, I said that. I said, um, just on the podcast, I had somebody that was just getting into Walmart and talking about it. And I'm like, you know, I said, give them several years. And I said, Walmart is going to surpass Amazon at some point because they have locations all over the country already they don't have to build warehouses they don't have to do all that like amazon had to do they're like set up to do one and two day shipping already it's like there's a walmart every you know at least every 15 miles around here um, yep. so it's interesting I, I i was saying that i said once walmart figures out this logistics and how this third party stuff works i said they're gonna nail it and probably be better than amazon because there's they already have so many locations so i always yep. thought that was super interesting if they can figure out the the logistics of dispersing and warehousing and things like that um they're going to be bigger than amazon eventually uh so that's, I think a that's a great really question important. that's a great example because there's their program that they have wfs which is the equivalent of amazon prime so it's called wfs um we were the first sellers in the original beta of it they brought 50 sellers into the beta and it, they just had one warehouse they used for it and now it's like all over the place tons of warehouses most major states and yeah they're also using their stores 90 percent of americans live within 10 miles of a walmart so exactly. it's like there's so much there yeah. And so I can't wait for, for that to happen with Walmart to actually see that surpassing this because, you know, they already have an established, you know, they've been established for many, many years and Amazon kind of figured it out. And now they're just saying, okay, thanks for figuring it out. Now we're going to use what you've done well and get rid of what you haven't done well. That's another thing I wonder as, as a, um, as an Amazon seller and just dipping my toes into Walmart, how do you feel they treat you as a seller? Because we know, let's just be real um, on Amazon they they we really feel like as sellers they really don't care about us like they're they're trying to improve that but it's always been about the customer always been about the buyer the buyer's always right if the buyer says that they don't like the product they get their money back sellers get screwed a lot um so being the beast that amazon is with that how how are they handling you as a as a seller um on walmart how are they treating you are they listening when you have feedback like tell us a little bit more about the seller uh relationship with with walmart yeah, so um, Walmart's really focused on their sellers. Um, in general, Walmart's a great partner in general. If you ask anybody who's worked with Walmart traditionally in retail, like they have very strict rules, but they're they they try to be your partner. They try to make you successful. You know, like a lot of retailers, it's all about getting fees from you and all about you know killing this stuff. Like Walmart is is known for being very stringent within their rules because they run a you know a massive operation. But they're they they always tell you they're they're your partners. Like when we were in conversations with our buyers at Walmart to get our products in stores, like they wanted to make sure we had enough margin to keep our business healthy. They wanted to make sure things like that. And that's that 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 kind of sentiment falls throughout the entire company. Um, so they are really focused on their sellers, and they realize now that a big part of getting their marketplace to grow is bringing on these sellers. So they have a lot of teams to support them, and yes, they still have like their rules in regards to making sure that you have really good customer experience. Um, but in general, they're much easier to work with. They have much more lenient terms of service. Um, and yeah, you know, there's accounts that get suspended all the time. We always work on getting them back and, you know, it's, it's pretty quick and efficient, um, process. So it's, 
it's it's really you know they they understand the value of merchants and of brands and they you know really put a lot of focus into it you know they they invest a lot in these sellers um next week actually they're launching their first um um show for marketplace sellers so it's a big show there's supposed to be close to 2000 sell marketplace sellers there and like just as an example marketplace is a part of their business but all the senior leadership from Walmart's flying down to that and speaking to sellers, even the CEO of Walmart um, as a whole, because it's just, it's such a big initiative for them. So that's been a big part of it. And because we work so closely with them, they always let us know how like, you know, they want to be in touch with more sellers. They want to talk to more sellers. They want to assist more sellers. So it's been a big thing of theirs. Awesome. Well, that is, you've just shared so many different insights there. So what, you know, what would someone do if they haven't been on to Walmart yet? Do you have any suggestions of a place to get started? Um, and, oh, I'm sorry. Um, a question before that, that I forgot is how do you know Walmart's a good fit for you when it comes to brands or, you know, you had mentioned earlier about some things do really well on Amazon that, that or don't do well on Amazon might actually do good on, on Walmart. What, how do we know that our products our product lines or our offerings are going to be a good fit for Walmart? Great question. So um, a few kind of things to keep in mind is, you know, the larger the market for the product is the better um, check price points. Um, right. So like, don't get scared with really, large markets because as long as you do things properly like you could rank really high very quickly at a low cost so like you're going to want to go after those big the bigger categories number two is just be aware of the pricing within that category because certain products you know certain product categories if you know there's so a ton of in-store items for that and they have like you know the in-store items are very you know very very competitive pricing and it's hard to compete with that it's gonna be all you could still sell and compete but like you know, if all your products are like that, it's going to be much harder. So um, you're going to want to, you know, focus on categories where your, the pricing is either more fluid. So there's like more variety of pricing within that category, or you're, you know, you have a good enough price point. So I think you're going to want to make sure about that. Um, and then, yeah, there, there makes, just make sure there's a lot of large generic keywords related to your product that, a, that, you know, your product would convert well for, right? So um, if your, if your product has those, um, you know, it's definitely, um, worth investing in. There's going to be, what I will say about Walmart is there's, as long as, you know, you, you follow some of the, the, the guidelines, like there's enough revenue and money to be made within that, with it now that makes it worthwhile. But the real reason is like you're growing with the platform and it's, you're, you're getting in right now. So it's really both of those. It's like, if there, it wasn't enough money to be made now, it's hard to justify investing the money and the time and resources to set up Walmart and make sales with it. But because you could even make money and profitably now, and, you know, if sellers on Walmart are very profitable just because um, how advertising is much cheaper, costs are much cheaper. So um, with in re regards to advertising, getting your products ranked. So um, that's been a big key thing we've seen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Cause I think that, you know, we, I teach like a very unique strategy on Amazon because of the competition and all of the crazy things and the fees that have gone up so many times I've had to create my own little um, niche in, in Amazon, as far as wholesale bundling is concerned, because um, straight up wholesale and things like that were just so competitive. It was really hard to make money with all of the different fees that they have. And, you know, when I first started on Amazon, um, you know, my average fees for, you know, products would probably be like 24 to 26%. Now we're at 37. So, um, and it's not, we haven't really changed a whole lot of what we're selling. Uh, Amazon's changed a whole lot of what they're charging. <laughs> and so it yeah, makes exactly. it a lot, a lot different. We've had to um, pivot and change many times um, to keep up with different fees. We've had to discontinue products that weren't worth it. So um, this is sounding very promising for those who have some unique and different things as well to offer because we know variety is the spice of life, right? And that's one of the reasons why Amazon has been the everything store is because they don't discriminate against what you can really bring to the table table as long as you're following the guidelines, but they're also becoming the most expensive platform to sell on. Um, you get the exposure, uh, but you also have to pay for the advertising now, which is, you know, the cost is going up so much. So I love the idea that this, this Walmart is still um, ground floor when it comes to third party marketplaces. Yes, they've been around and yes, they've been doing it for quite a while, um, but it's still pretty new compared to what Amazon has been. Um, Amazon has been around so long. So I, I, I can't wait to see how 
Walmart continues to evolve for sellers. And I love hearing that they're so supportive of their selling partners because Amazon calls us selling partners, but we're anything but partners sometimes. Um, so yes. I love to hear that's a breath of fresh air to know. So how can people get um, in touch with you and um, your services and what I know? Tell us about your agency. Awesome. Yeah. So we're Walmart. Um, you know, we realized when we were selling a lot of Walmart um, and, um, you know, so we started looking for different providers to work with and we realized nobody was really specialized in Walmart. And in order to be successful on it, the way we were successful on it, we treated it as its own beast and understood all the nuances of it. So um, you started the agency a few years ago. Um, we started working with larger brands and then opened it up to work a lot with emerging brands. Um, and yeah, we managed over 400 brands on the platform, over hundred thousand products. We're, um, one of Walmart's approved agency partners, um, as well as approved API partners. So we have, a we have full service offerings as well as, um, specific offerings to kind of help, whether it's just need Walmart specific listing optimization, whether it's, you need, um, to host enhanced content on your listing, whether, you know, you need, a, you know, we're launching next week our, um, on like a, a, a pretty industry game changing, like profit analytics tool specifically for Walmart, which like integrates all your numbers. Um, you know, we have the only Walmart reimbursement solution as well. So we have a full suite of offerings um, around Walmart. Um, so yeah, we work very closely with them. Um, we're actually the sponsor at the at the, the event next week. So it's pretty, pretty exciting to work closely with them. If you have any questions about Walmart, want us to look into your account or anything like that, they could just go to Cellcord, S-E-L-L-C-O-R-D.com and just reach out um, and we'll, we'll kind of, you know, look at your brand, give you suggestions if we think it'll be the right fit for Walmart you know, give you an order for that and no cost. And then we could kind of see if it makes sense to work together. We could, you know, help out. Um, yeah, we work with a lot of emerging brands, smaller brands. We have like very affordable costs for an agency. We run more as like sellers because, you know, most of the team is experienced sellers. So um, yeah, it's been, it's, it, um, you could just reach out and um, yeah, we'll be in touch. Awesome, Michael. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing all of your knowledge. It's been so helpful even for me to learn a little bit more. You guys, Cellcord, S-E-L-L-C-O-R-D.com. You want to make sure you reach out to Michael and his team and they're happy to help and just, you know, have a conversation. That's all you have to do. There's no obligation to have a conversation about them looking at your products and seeing if you're a good fit for Walmart. And if so, they can help you get started. Don't reject the help that's out there, you guys. There's people that are, are building these wonderful tools and resources to help other people and help sellers get started and not just get started, but to thrive. Um, it's another revenue stream. If you have gotten Amazon figured out and you're doing well and things are going okay, it's time to start adding another revenue stream. Sell the same products in a different place and you'd be surprised at how much more revenue you can be bringing in when you do that. So Michael, thank you so much for coming here. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. So I appreciate your time and your expertise. And y'all, we'll see you same time, same place next week on on the Amazon files.